Good morning, my brothers and sisters. Back with you with part four of this spirit-led teaching. Christ is the true generational wealth. He's the true generational wealth, not money, not possessions. That's not generational wealth. That is provision. Okay, generational wealth is Christ, and Christ alone is generational wealth. And when the, uh, when the generational wealth of our salvation goes from us to our seed, to our seed seed, uh, in the spirit, it brings the government unto the flesh by the fruit of the spirit. And what is preserved from generation to generation is the provision of the spirit, which is the provision of Christ. But the provision of Christ, it is it follows and it, it is preserved by the prosperity of Christ. Because provision is for the male and the female. Prosperity is for the man and the woman. We must separate spiritual manhood and womanhood from natural malehood and femalehood. Second Corinthians 4, 3 and 4. It says, for if our gospel is hid, it is hid from those who are lost. The lost. Now the lost are in church. The lost are very, the lost are very scriptural. They're very biblical. It is hidden from those who are lost, in whom the God of this present age had blinded the minds of them which believe not. Least the light of the glorious gospel of Christ. The gospel of Christ, not the gospel of the Bible, the gospel of Christ, not the gospel of church, the gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. Least the gospel of Christ, the light of the gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. You ain't in the gospel, you ain't in the light. You're still in, in, in the letter. You're still in Bible-based religion or Judeo religion, the children of the flesh, Romans 9, 8. These are not the children of God, but the children of the promise are counted as the seed. So we must come to a revelation of the gospel of the spirit. We must come to a revelation of the gospel of the spirit and lose the church mentality because it is the church mentality that is blinding you to the gospel because Satan is unlawfully using the letter to blind you to the light. Okay. And when light comes, we have to be careful because Hebrews 10, 26 says, for if we sin willfully after coming to the revelation of the truth, to the knowledge of the truth, which means the revelation of the truth, there remains no more sacrifice for sins. That's it. It's over. If you deny the gospel of the cross, which is an eternal work, and you do it with knowledge of knowing that that's what you're doing, that's it. There's no forgiveness for that. Let us go to let us go to Matthew 12, 31, 32. Matthew 12, 31, 32. Wherefore I say unto you, Matthew 12, 31, 32, 31. Wherefore I say unto you, all manner of sin and blasphemy shall be forgiven unto men. That's mankind. But the blasphemy, uh, the blasphemy against the Holy Spirit shall not be forgiven unto men. If you blaspheme Christ while he walked in the flesh on earth, it'll be forgiven you. But if you blaspheme Christ as in his original state, if you blaspheme Jesus in his original state as the Christ, there's no forgiveness for that. There's no forgiveness for that. You see, you get the same judgment Satan got. Satan, with knowledge of who Christ was, sinned against him. He committed the unpardonable sin. And when we come to the knowledge of who Christ is, and we blaspheme him, that's unforgivable. There's no forgiveness for that. Thirty-two, and whosoever speaketh a word against the Son of Man, it shall be forgiven him. That's Jesus in it. that's Jesus in the third person in the flesh. But whoso speaketh against the Holy Spirit, 
That's Jesus in his original state as the Spirit, the Savior, the Gospel. Whoso speaketh against the Holy Spirit, it shall not be forgiven him, neither in this world, neither in the world to come. It shall not be forgiven. This is why we have to make the distinction between the physical manifestation of Christ and Jesus in his original state as the Christ who is the image of God, which makes Christ God. Which makes Christ God. So we're, we're, and the gospel of the spirit, to deny the gospel of the spirit is blasphemy against the spirit. And many have denied the gospel, but they've done it ignorantly. When we do something ignorantly, it means we're doing it not knowing any better. We're not knowing any better. We haven't come to a revelation of the truth, so we've done something outside of the truth because we have a church mentality and we think church is the gospel because in church, the Bible is being preached to you and the traditions of men being teached to you. So when, when, when the gospel of the spirit is brought forth in, in that person's spirit is brought under the conviction of the spirit. It terrifies them because they're not accustomed to that. Yeah, they have a little biblical guilt here and there and uh, uh, unlawfully using the letter to show them how to be better people and all this stuff. See, they don't mind that. It's the conviction of the spirit that terrifies them because your perception in a church might be one way and I guarantee you, your perception by the gospel of the spirit is a whole nother way because church is flesh, the gospel is spirit. The hope of glory is, your, is Christ in you, in your, in your spirit in Christ. Not your flesh in church. We can't bring glory to God through the letter. We have to do that in the light. And it is Christ that brings the glory to God through, uh, through us. Because he's our righteousness before God the Father. If you're in Christ, if you're not in Christ, he's not your Father. Let us go to Matthew 13, 11. 13, 11 says, Because it is given to you to know the mysteries of the kingdom of God, of the kingdom of heaven. Why it is given unto you to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven? Because Luke 17, 21 says that the kingdom of heaven shall be in you. Now, the kingdom of God is the spirit of God, which is the spirit of heaven. That's heaven. You shall know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven, which is the manifold wisdom of God, Ephesians 3.10. But to them that are with, but to them, but to them it is not given. Those that are without the, the, uh, the kingdom of heaven, those that are without the spirit of Christ. It is not given, they're without it. For whosoever had, to him shall be given. And he shall have more abundance. He's already going to have the abundant life, but he will receive more abundance because he's going to become fruitful and more fruitful. And he shall have more abundance, but whosoever had not, from him shall be taken away even that which he has. Those that deny the light in order to remain in biblical ignorance of the letter, even the letter is going to be taken from them because the letter is the religion of Christ. And the religion of Christ, when lawfully taught, was to point us to the gospel of Christ. The religion of Christ in the flesh was to point us to the gospel of Christ in the spirit when it's lawfully taught. When it's lawfully taught. Because we received the letter in the flesh while being dead under law and spirit. We were in the second heaven. And in the second heaven is where we, we received the letter by sight. In the second heaven, we're limited to sight. That's where the high mind it all. So we received the letter in the flesh while being under the second heaven, Ephesians 6, 12, in the spirit. And in the letter by sight, in John 3, 3 is where we saw we must be born of the Spirit, So, which is, an, which is an eternal work of the Spirit. So when we were born of the Spirit, if you've been born of the Spirit, because that has to be confirmed by Christ's Spirit, Romans 8, 16, 8, 16, we're now back in the mind of Christ. We're in the light. 
Now we see the letter from a place of the gospel. Now we see the letter by sight in the flesh from a place of the gospel of Christ in the spirit. Okay. And through through the mind of, of that born again spirit, the letter will be lawfully taught. The letter will be lawfully taught. The letter will be lawfully taught. We go on down to 16, it says, 13, 16, it says, but blessed are your eyes for they see and your ears for they hear. Blessed are your eyes for they see and your ears for they hear. You see, the, because you're in the kingdom of heaven. That's the heavenly places, Ephesians 1, 3. This is where you hear what the church world and the world cannot hear. Because the church world and the world are in the same spiritual condition. And this is where you see what the world and the church world cannot see. You're operating in the uncommon knowledge of Christ. The uncommon knowledge of Christ. Bringing light to a lost and dying church and a lost and dying world. And that brings us brings us to the end of this teaching. Uh, love you in the Lord. See you next time.